the split step experiment. Is the split step worth learning? Ever since I started trying to incorporate the split step into my own game, I've wondered about how beneficial it really is. For curiosity's sake, I decided to test it out. So if you're interested to hear what I found, stick around. The first thing I did was measure the time it took for me to move from a complete standstill to performing a backhand volley. I started timing from the first frame of movement until the racket head was just over the short line. At the start of each take, I held my racket down by my feet and remained completely flat-footed. Shy of lying down on the floor, this is probably the least efficient position to take off from. Next, I measured the time it took to perform a very exaggerated split step and then doing a backhand volley, starting with my racket up. Typically, the pros will raise up on their toes slightly and then drop, as opposed to actually jumping up in the air, but I wanted to really get a sense of how much faster this could be if you started off with a lot of momentum. I started timing, in this case, from the second one of my feet touched the floor, because this should be about the same time as a beginner would start moving. Let's take a quick look at the fastest take from each run and see how they compare. I also did a number of takes where I performed the split step, but sidestepped into the backhand volley. I found that at least in this test, sidestepping was still much faster than moving from a standstill, but marginally slower than the traditional movement. However, the sidestep did feel like it took less energy to perform, so there's definitely a trade-off there. I can't confirm that for sure, but just my personal opinion. Before I wrapped up for the night, I also did a few takes moving into the back corner. Again, I did a few runs from a standstill and a few utilizing the split step. In these cases, I stopped the timer right when my right foot was planted in the back, before I started to make my swing. Let's take a side-by-side -side look and see how those compared. Now on to the results. From a standstill, with my racket down to perform the volley, it took on average 1.2 seconds. Again from a standstill, with my racket up to perform that same volley, it took on average 1.1 seconds. Utilizing the split step with the racket up to perform the volley, it took 0.9 seconds. However, if you mistime the split step, you can easily end up taking more time than if you started from the standstill. That little hop I performed at the start of each split step added an additional 0.6 seconds. On to the movement into the back corner. From a standstill with my racket down, to plant my foot at the back, it took 1.6 seconds. With the split step, I was able to get to the back and plant my foot in one second flat. That means that I could get to the ball a full half second faster. So although this test wasn't perfect, I can pretty confidently say that if you put in the time to learn the split step and you can time it properly, you will definitely get to the ball a lot faster than if you just moved off from a standstill. Now although this video is a bit different than what I usually put out, I really enjoyed making it. If you want to see more of this sort of stuff, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you prefer to see less of it. I'll see if I can link to some split step training videos in the description for those interested in trying to learn, although I haven't put together a dedicated series on split step just yet. That will come in time.